Hello. Hey, is this Brian? Brian. Hey, how are you doing today, dude? I'm doing good, man. Absolutely. How are you doing? Fantastic, man. Really digging this music that you've got. You have got a unique sound when it comes to speed kills. How did this even come into play? Uh, well, I wrote the music first. Just uh, my musical idea that I, I came up with the title, Speed Kills. And I just give the music to my, my singer, uh, Bob Reynolds. And he wrote all the lyrics and melodies. And it just like came together very quickly. Don't you love that when when things like that happen where you can you can come out with a guitar riff and then all of a sudden you you hand it to somebody else and it's like okay I've got this I've got the needle in the haystack let's run with it. Oh, absolutely. It it's like like you have an idea like I mean I write songs in different ways but that one was I wanted to write a song that was like a freight train or a <laughs> car driving 120 down the highway or you know something aggressive and fast and it just came together real quick. It wasn't a difficult song to write. But. That's so funny that you say that about about making a, a song fast because one of the things that I've listened to, first of all, is always the drums because I had a drummer tell me one time that the drums mimic your mother's heartbeat. So I sit there and I go, all right, let me let me see if I can hear my mom's heartbeat in this song. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, I mean, bands like Ramstein, like, will time his heart beat and then write the song and he'll do push-ups or whatever to get his heart to the the speed of the song and and yeah I mean, there's something something to do with that definitely you, you you've made this very attractive from the very beginning because you've got the bass and the drums and then and then bob comes in i mean i love the way that that, that you know you you put the instruments first and it gives it gives me t plenty of time to digest what's happening all right here we go tell share with me the story yes that it like the vibe the drums my, the drums were like the first thing. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, I needed a double bass, just driving beat that like never stops. You know, just that that vibe of of aggression and speed and get you going. So I I kept all rhythms in the beginning with, with no leads or anything, just so you can vibe with that rhythm. You know, it just kind of gets the blood flowing, gets you going with the with the beat of the song. And then when the vocals come in, it's just like, oh, okay. And if you notice, like the verse and chorus are basically the same rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to write a song like that because usually I'm trying to separate everything. But that where it just flows all the way through the song. And I think they could pulled it off on that one. Yeah, yeah. Do you find yourself enjoying the exploration? Because it seems like we're in this this age of music now where it's like, wow, there, there are no boundaries around us. Let's just have some fun. Yes, Yes, that, yeah, that, that's the way, uh, I mean, you should write, you're writing original music, you know, write whatever you feel, what you like, and then, you know, hope everybody likes it, you know, but if you're writing for specific genre or vibe, you know, it, it may not come out as original as if you're just writing what you're feeling and, and what you like. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you write for the Spotify radio person or are you writing for that live audience? Uh, I, on that stuff, I was just writing for myself, nice. which I, I love. <laughs> I love the live audience. So, you know, it's like being uh, in a touring band for so many years, you know, you get that, you, you kind of know what works and what doesn't work. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking about that, like, like a live situation, you know, how, how's this going to come over live, you know? I'm glad that you're bringing up the the uh, the live audience, and the reason why is because I sat there at Cirque du Soleil last night, and and the way that they were they were accepting the audience applause at the end, and I went, I wonder if musicians feel the same way at the end of the show, where they're just pulling in all of that energy from that crowd. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're you're kind of doing that like on every song. Yeah. You know, you you kind of get a good response, or if you don't get a good response, you feel it. You go, ah, oh, that didn't go over so well, or you'd play a song and you go, oh man, that went over so good. We got to keep doing that. You know? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> now you and Bob were on this project for a long time, weren't you? Uh, well, Bob and I have been writing songs. I own a music library, yeah. which is a, a music licensing company called Digital Assassin Music. And I license music to TV shows and promos and film, what, what, whatever needs music. And we, we've been writing songs together for, geez, 10 years now. And we, we would write a song and we'd be like, man, this is really good, man. We should have a band. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it took several years before we actually uh, decided to put a band together. And, yeah, 
so Bob's been around for a while with me and uh, just love writing with him. We, we just kind of compliment each other. See, listeners don't understand that when it comes to putting those production libraries to this. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I started the, the music library, you know, because I've always been in bands. So it was like it was kind of like I was trying to write like it was a band. And then over the years, you know, I've learned to write for certain situations because there are there are those situations where they want a certain type of rhythm yep. or a certain type of vibe. Because it's all about the feel of the song. You know, they're looking for an emotion to fill a scene in a movie or a TV show or a promo or, what you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, you, there's there's like two sides there. Like if I go into writing mode for the library, a lot of times it's not what I would write for my own band, you know, for or for myself. But yet I found in the beginning that's what I was trying to do. And mm-hmm. I, the more I pulled away from that, it became easier to write for the library. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. when I write for myself, I get a little, uh, uh, you know, perfectionist. Yeah. Like, oh, no, this has to be <laughs> just the way I want it. <laughs> But in the library, it's more, you know, you, you can pick a genre or pick a vibe and just write for that feeling and that emotion. How do you keep the uh, peace between the separation between the church and state? Because, I mean, there, there are so many things that I do in my creative world and people go, how do you do it all? I go, I don't know. I, I just know what needs to be done. Right. Yeah, it, it's a uh, it's definitely uh, something that just kind of, at least in my situation, you know, it, it has to come to me. If I'm, if I'm trying to be creative, you know, there's days that I don't feel creative. Yep, yep. I can't write, I can't even write my name, you know, it's like, okay. And then there's other days where I can write a book, you know, it just comes out. I'll write three songs in a day and go, oh man, these are all good. But some days or some weeks, some months, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. You get that writer's block, but yep. you just kind of have to go out and, and uh, experience life, you know, it's things that come to you. Oh, that's so I listen to a lot of music, so I'm listening to music all the time. So I get inspired. You have to. Oh yeah, my God! Absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's, it's it's one of those things where people, you know, like when they go, oh, I only listen to one genre of music. You're lost. You're lost, man, because yeah. there's a lot to explore out there. <laughs> yeah, if, people have joked about because like my iPod has so many different styles of music, and they're they'll go, dude, you listen to Frank Sinatra? <laughs> What's that jazz stuff doing on there? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I listen. I love all kinds of music. I like good music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If it's if it's good, it can be in almost any genre. If it's a good song or, you know, something that captures an emotion you're feeling or, you know, I, I like all kinds of music. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a metalhead at heart. Yep. Rock's always been my, my main thing. I don't play a lot of that music I listen to, but, I love listening to it. So speaking of rock, Live the Rock Volume 1, does that tell me there's going to be two, three, four, and 5? Well, that's a, a company that uh, Ron Keel started. Yeah. And that was his first release on that. I'm assuming that. Uh, I'm assuming he's uh, going to be putting out other volumes. I, I hope he does. Yeah. It was a good concept. I mean, back in the 80s when like Mike Varney and Brian Slagle was putting out compilations, you know, it's kind of he's kind of following that same same pattern which uh i think is a great idea because it gets a lot of new bands out where people can hear new bands i remember going over to ernie's records and tapes and buying only compilations right look look metallica you know they were on brian slagle's a lot of big bands you know came out of of those compilations yeah yeah so are you on the road are you going on the road where's the swag let's get some you know listeners to buy swag from you yeah i mean Dogbone, well, first to go back, I mean, Dogbone was, was, I first started putting Dogbone together when I left Keel in 1989. And we we went for a couple of years there doing shows in Hollywood and, and Southern California. And, you know, that was right when the grunge scene was taken off and Nirvana <laughs> hit. And, you know, our style of music, the companies weren't interested. And it was really hard to get anything going at that time with this style. So, you know, that ended that section of the band so it wasn't until this last couple of years that keel's drummer uh, Dwayne miller and i were talking like dude we, you know we need to do something else because keel's not doing a lot of shows and uh we go hey, well let's put something together and i was like why not reform dog ban- dog bone because we never really finished it <laughs> yeah when we started back then so 
we're in the process of just getting this going. Speed Kills is the first single out there. That's it. I have a brand new single, which will be out in the next month or two, uh, along with a video. And we're trying to put this together. You know, hopefully we get some shows going. Uh, we'll definitely let everybody know when that when that happens. So you you hit something there that um, we a lot of people don't understand as listeners, and that is is that the record companies are in or were in control. But don't you like the way that it is today, where you are the CEO and president of Me Incorporated? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, back in the day, like you needed that. If you were going to do anything, you know, you needed that backing of a record company and, and they, they ran it, you know, they owned it. But yeah, with, with today's technology and record companies is dying out, you know, they're not signing new bands and, and it's not the same. I mean, record business has changed so much. You know, you look at all the bands that have made it promoting mm-hmm. themselves. That's it. You know, that's the way to go these days. I mean, we could do all the recording on our laptops, even <laughs> on our phones, you know. <laughs> It, like speed kills all this stuff that we're recording is all done in my home studio and singer's home studio and bass player's home studio <laughs> but uh it's yeah it's, it's a much different time and, and i love it because yeah we have control of it instead of giving it to somebody else yeah so were you shocked that dog bone was not already taken yeah to be honest yeah yeah when we had it we found the name in 1990 it was like yeah, there's no bands. I mean, we didn't have the internet back then, and but even today, when when it started again, there there was nobody called Dogbone. At least not any band that you know had a record deal or had albums out or anything. Yeah, were you? But, sh- yeah. Were you shocked when Kiss unveiled their uh, their Navitar concert? I mean, it, it, to me, as a fan, it's like, oh, my God, I knew there was going to be another level. But then I start thinking about the other musicians. Will you grow in an area like that, too, to figure out ways to reach fans in this in this world, the, the metaverse world? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a scary thing because we don't really know where it's going to go. Yeah. I mean, are they trying to put musicians out of business, Uh-oh. you know, or, or is it just going to be something that's new technology that, you know, we all can explore. So, yeah, I guess time will tell on, on how that all goes. Cause it, it could be good and it could be bad. I think there's just like the internet. <laughs> there's a good side to it and there's a bad side to it. You're so right about that because I was reading an article that says that AI technology will have the ability to recreate itself in 10 years. And and with yeah. you with you saying that will it create its own music, they're already doing it for voiceover people. Dude, I, I don't get voiceover jobs because of AI now. Right. Yeah, I know. It's it's that that part's kind of scary. And it's like, you know, the laws, can they use your image? Can they use your voice and your style without your permission? And so yeah, there's there's probably a lot of areas there that, that are very shady right now that they can take advantage of it. But, you know, as I said, time will tell with how this all turns out with the AI stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pretty incredible what they can do. Oh, yeah, because there's still a lot of people that do enjoy it. I mean, I geez, I mean, I remember when Pro Tools came onto the scene and everybody's going, oh, my God, it's all over. Oh, my, they're not going to use right. tape anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah, I went, I went through that. I remember... I, cause I never knew how to use a computer. <laughs> yeah. I learned by like cakewalk. It was like, Oh, they got a program I can record in my bedroom on my computer. I got to get a computer. So I learned the computer of just how to control the, the system, the cakewalk at the time I was using. And so, <laughs> so it'd be like, Oh, somebody said, Oh, copy and paste. I was like, I didn't even know how to do that. I had to learn how to use the computer. <laughs> through making music on the computer so it's kind of funny yeah you you have to adapt this new technology i know a lot of people don't like it but you're gonna have to adapt because it's changing the world that's for sure well the one thing that i love that most musicians are talking about and i'm sure you will too uh the only one person can put the humanism in music and it's you guys a computer oh, cannot absolutely. yeah i don't see I, well, how can you go to a concert and not really watch the band playing live mm-hmm. and actually singing and playing their instruments. You know, it's, it's, it's look at, look how these massive audiences, look at the last Metallica tour and Pantera out there, massive football stadiums of people loving live music. So, you know, I don't know if that's ever going to go away because people do want to get out and, yep. and see a live band. Oh, we yeah. definitely as musicians want to get up and play. 
So, you know, time will tell, I guess. Yeah, I've got to be able to feel that bass guitar in my heart, and then in my head it says drums, and then here comes the vocals, because my mouth has to sing something. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so where can people go to find out more about Dogbone, sir? Well, we have a, a YouTube page. You could go to the Dogbone, the band, on YouTube, and also Facebook and Instagram, the same Dogbone, the band. Um, my Facebook and Instagram is Brian J Guitar and Brian J. So you know, you can find us out there. I mean, go on our YouTube page, watch the. We have a lyric video that just came out a few weeks ago nice. for Speed Kills. So go on there, and and we'll be posting a lot more videos up there. You know, we're in the beginning stage, so we don't have a lot of content, but we're working on it, and we should be out soon. A lot of new stuff going on. You got to document this. You got to create a journal around this because somewhere down the road, 10, 15 years from now, people are going to say, so what was it like? Well, I think it went this way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you talking about the band? Yeah. The yeah. I, yeah. I think so. I mean, just musically in general, because, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that it, with, with, with what's happening with our lives, we're, we're all getting older, but who's carrying yeah. that story forward? But the interpreter who's, who's picking up the music saying, oh, this is what they were really like when that wasn't really the story. Right. Right. Yeah. It, I guess with, with having like YouTube and you, you're able to document things a lot as you go. And, you know, if you die off or when you die off, you know, your people still have that to go back to. So I, I guess it is up to you the, for us to tell our story along the way yeah. and document that. And uh, I, I know a lot of bands are doing that, you know, using this technology to if they're gone in five years, you know, you still you, you can watch, you can listen, you can buy, you know, it, it keeps going. Well, as long as somebody's running it and, and keeping it going. That's but, right. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you. Excellent. And if you come through Charlotte, man, you got we, we got to get together for a face to face face to face conversation. Oh, uh, that'd be great. I haven't been to Charlotte in a while. <laughs> well, come on down, as they say here in the South. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you guys, uh, the weather's a little different. I'm in Southern California, so what, uh, wintertime, hey, it, it feels like summer. <laughs> yeah, you don't want us today. We went down to 23 last night. You don't want a piece of this action. <laughs> yeah, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay, Brian? Hey, I appreciate the time, and thanks for having me on here, and uh, let's talk again.